All right, a um, couple of updates in there. I'll skip those, let everybody read them. Um, first topic, so planning on testing and validating performance improvements for 1810. Um, I was gonna say it makes the most sense for Nicola to pick up, but he is, well, I guess he's out this week, we still have next week. Uh, to the question, do we need a buy improvement breakdown? I think those are kind of natural artifacts of the individual issues, but for 1810, really just the before and after is what I will summarize uh, and not just in 1810 but also in the 10x initiative the different issue altogether so I will the answer here do we, do we think um, that we would just use the GitLab HQ export that we've been using mostly for testing and maybe the uh, big customer import that we had that we knew was causing issues that should be be good enough probably yeah that's what i was thinking so for incremental testing just use the the gitlab export because that's the smaller of the two by a lot right um while you're testing the buy improvement issues and then at the end if we can get a big run on that customer export if we can still use it then that would be a fantastic measurement too so do we update GitLab HQ? I know probably the structure is not changing much, but last couple of months I checked it, it wasn't updated. So I wonder if we keep it up to date. Uh, because we also yeah. we also use GitLab HQ for kind of correctness validation as well. So we run it, run, run this medium sized import to check that nothing breaks. And it makes sense to keep it updated uh, yeah. on a regular basis. Uh, and I could, I should check it, I guess, because I have some concerns about <laughs> its freshness. Um, the ones, the one we use for performance testing isn't updated. Um, it's actually quite, it's not easy to get your hands on uh, as an export. Uh, I've tried multiple times actually to go into GitLab.com itself and export it, uh, the false version specifically, um, but um, it doesn't work. <laughs> uh, I don't know why, but it just, it just this. It just gets stuck in pending and it just doesn't work. Um, so I don't know the best way to get our hands on an export route. We can maybe request one every so often to update the project that we do use. Um, but for our associate, just performance testing, that's not something that we're specifically testing at the moment. But for you guys, it makes more sense. So um, you might need to ask the IT guys or the DevOps guys if they can go in and get us a, a, a clean kind of tar ball export of. Okay. Um, another then, problem was that uh, I think Emil pointed this out before as well. Like we've been testing all along on our local development machines, but that only goes so far as to verify, you know, how this would actually run in production. You know, where you have caches in place and the whole infrastructure is totally different. <laughs> uh, so. Uh, like we had done some testing on staging, right? Like doing the rapid action. Uh, issue so like I don't think any of us have access to this so we might need help from someone with staging access to actually run this I guess on staging or some production like uh, instance as well I would I would imagine to really make sure you know we're looking at the right thing here um, he's speaking to the right guy um, we have multiple performance level environments uh, production level of virus, sorry, that are, we could use to do import testing as you require. Okay, yep, great. So um, just, just let us know when, right, when we right. can try it. Okay, great, yeah. Is, is that something we can trigger, like any of us can trigger as well, or just like we, um, can, uh, yeah. we, we can discuss kind of how to kind of get you guys kind of up to speed and how to do that. The reason is that all environments are actually switched off as soon as we test them for cost saving reasons, because they're also quite expensive to run. Um, but for a valid test effort like this, it's fair enough to actually have it running for like a few hours or, or as long as it needs to, to test it out. Um, so basically, I'd just be going into like a Google, a, Google, a, GC, a Google Cloud project and just switching the environment on, waiting for it to, to spin up and then testing it uh, and then spinning it back down again. Yeah, excellent. Thanks. And that kind of leads into the next bullet point. So do we want to create specific issues for all of the, or maybe even just one issue for the testing work that we're going to do to validate the before and after, or do we want to just continue adding test results and steps to the Epic? 
and there's a specific section within the epic i'm not sure if i linked it on this one yep so there's a result from testing but we're not calling out explicitly the testing and verification we want to do so do we want a specific issue for that i think it would help like because if questions come up then you can ping people it, it might, you know it might just get a little unwieldy in the epic itself and then we can you know once we have a final result we can maybe link it or copy it over to the epic I yeah explain. i agree i'd also like to for it to be a separate issue yeah, it, by pick. yeah, I agree as well. It would be good for, for us kind of being a little bit a step away from this to be able to come in and have one place to look at and go, okay, where we are, where, where we are, where we're going, where we at, that kind of stuff. So, Okay, I will start the issue and put in what I can and then I'll ping everybody on it so you can start adding comments and specifics about what's being tested and where. Um, the, yeah, the next one is mine. I was just wondering because that would factor into that answer, of course, if we, if we mm -hmm. were to still be able to get this done. It's just we're still kind of like we need to make a final call, you know, do we want to get this in as is where it doesn't always help or makes things slightly worse for certain kind of project setups? Or do we want to put it behind a switch or do we want to do it for certain kind of projects only? So, so I guess there's still some questions open here. Or we, or we can say we delay it and you know, look at it again for 12.8 and then not consider it. But I think we need to know this before we do the final measurements, uh, you know, whether we want to consider this, uh, this optimization or not. Yeah, and I asked for some more data and, and Josh is on his way to commit. So we're not going to get it in the next couple of days. So okay, fair enough. Yep. the timing for this will not fit in with the requested timing for wrapping up 10x. But if it's yep. important for 10x, then, you know, it's kind of a chicken egg thing. Yeah, um, it, 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 because I think it might, I, I think it will help a lot, very likely with the, uh, the big customer import, right? Mm -hmm. Because it seems to be uh, uh, really... Um, it seems to be really impactful for these really large uh, uh, projects. Yeah, it would be interesting to put it behind a flag, right? Because you yeah, said maybe. for smaller imports, right. it actually costs more. So if they know yeah. the size of the yeah. import, they could turn on this optimization. So, so why don't I just put it behind something really explicit that's really like a dev only switch uh, so that it would not run in production, but we make it kind of, just so we can actually like also have the comparison when we do run these measurements that should probably yeah. be possible somehow. Maybe it's just an environment variable that we don't document somehow. Um, yeah. yeah, and then, yeah. And if we then decide against it, we, we can just remove it again. Are you pretty close to wrapping that one up, you think? Yeah, yeah, yeah because the implementation is there. It's just like, it was the question, because the, the results were so, um, yeah, ambiguous, depending on what kind of project you were looking at. It just yeah. wasn't a clear cut, oh, this always helps kind of thing. So uh, it's really just about, you know, do we always want to apply this optimization or not? Because in some cases, it makes things slightly worse. So it's not an optimization in that case. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I think putting it behind a switch is the right way to go on that one. Okay, fair enough. Cool, yeah, I, I, can, I can do that. Awesome. Camille, oh, you're typing. A good question. Do you have any thoughts on what Camille just typed out there, Matthias? So, if dot JSON is greater than five hundred megabits, megabytes, uh, enable it. Probably makes sense. Yeah, yeah. This is something we we can do. It seems to suggest that this is that's somewhere where the threshold is. That's, that's yeah, pretty we, we simple. Do, it's fairly yeah. safe, right? It's just like this would mean it would definitely affect things in production, uh, as imports are larger but it seems like a safe yeah okay fair enough why, why, why not do this and if we find like that for whatever reason it doesn't have the effect that we think it has we can always re revisit it right. um, but to be honest for a small json it won't be an issue to make the duplication it won't make much of an impact bad impact over, over our performance if we just go through small json i think so maybe we should just deduplicate it without switches. You mean always run it? Yeah. I mean, 
when I was running that, I didn't notice like some huge impact. Of course, we have like upfront cost to to build this deduplicated example, but on my experiments, it wasn't much compared to overall import time. So I didn't see it being badly impactful. I think it's easier, it's easier to debug a single version. Yeah, that's yeah. my argument. My only concern was um, if we're doing a bunch of imports at the same time, all these little cuts add up, right? So, okay, if we're talking about enabling a switch based on size, are we, does that mean we have a couple switches now where it can be explicitly just turned off if we find this is a problem and turned on if it's greater than 500 or explicitly turned on? Probably something we should figure out async. We should spend yeah, enough time I, on this because, one. Because so. exactly, because I started that discussion already in the in the PR. Um, let yep. me link. Oh, I, oh, sorry, I did link the PR. Yes, yeah, so, uh, the MR. So maybe you can just leave your feedback there. I'll look at it and then we come to a decision and I'll uh, implement it this week. Yeah, and to be incremental and in, uh, follow up on GitLab values and to Camille's point there, you know, if we ever get to ending JSON, then this won't be super useful. So We'll talk about it asynchronously, but let's uh, figure out what the smallest increment is that we can try and ship. So, all right. Um, and then Camille, you had the next note there. Yes, uh, as for the import export stuff, I, from my perspective, it would really help if we would run, I don't know, daily, some kind of script that produce a benchmark the number, the time take, like needed to perform exports and time needed to perform import. And I think that we kind of failed that we didn't think about that before, because now like with these few months of the improvements, we would have very nice graph that would show us how long it takes to take, to, to make an import of a project. And it could be GitLab HQ as something to start with. So, uh, I think, yes, like we can do it, run it manually, but we are not doing that after every change. And uh, like my latest change, Matthias is saying that it brings like 5% improvement and we match these five, I mean, like maybe two or 5% improvements quite a bunch already. Uh, so like the, like the small, like this, Running that up after every change is just time consuming. But if you would have it automated, there is like two benefits out of that. First, like we get this data consistently against like some production like environment on daily basis or and also on latest changes. We see like the trend of how uh, the things are improving are progressing because we finish uh, like short-term improvements for the import export uh, but like ability to measure how long it takes to import and export uh, it's still gonna be useful to check whether there are some regressions uh, for running these things so i love that idea <laughs> i um, think it's a great idea is so this, yeah yeah is this Good. something that performance like the test engineering team could help with because we already have the performance testing infrastructure there. Um, maybe, yeah, it's something to explore for sure. Uh, it's it's an interesting test because it's kind of half, it's half performance, half functional. Um, I don't, I'm, I'm still not sure really where this kind of falls. Um, but in terms of like a, a pipeline, I would continuously test it, and I guess with then the, the various paths that could go down. Um, we can certainly advise and we can figure out together where, where that would go. Um, so yeah, it's something that we, we want to, we'll definitely want to talk about, yeah. All right, I'll set up an issue for that and we can follow up on. Um, let's see up next. So I will, so I wrote up a summary where we were probably six weeks ago on 4951. I will write up something similar. 
so we can summarize that we are effectively done, or we think we're done. We'll work on this with um, Andrew and get feedback from everybody. Uh, next one, import, export, greater than Sidekick Puma. Um, definitely Sidekick. Um, we're wrapping up 1855. I will wrap, I'll link that later. Puma, um, probably equivalent priority. If I know Camille has been the one that's mostly been focusing on Puma, although Chinyu is focusing on the um, rugged patching work right now. Um, Tough call <laughs> if, if we're all full, if we're all um, very busy and something comes up on either one, we'll just have to figure out how to split time on that. But I'd say Puma and, and um, import, export are equivalent right now. Does that make sense? Were you gonna say something, Camille? I think you were getting ready to type something there. Mm -hmm. I, I don't really have anything to add. I would rather say that like, I would ask like to uh, like finish this 10x because like as for the Puma stuff, I'm now kind of waiting for Andrew to validate the, the, the production. And from the outstanding uh, jobs is like figuring out a way to upstream the patch and what is Chinyu working on. Like we don't work on anything else at that moment as for the puma and also like i don't see like anything else at this moment so we are kind of being blocked waiting for andrew at that and he's he's out this week so well there were a couple back. smaller things right uh still so related there was this whole gitlab control um change regarding to how we um for, for like zero downtime deployments right i think there's still an open story an open issue there i think was it okay okay um, so uh documentation, uh, oh, just documentation. Okay. Yeah. but like like the, there is no code that changes there is like documentation mm -hmm. improvements okay. let's see we're starting to jump into this so um, I think next on the agenda was the MR throughput retro, but we're getting a lot of good async conversation on that. So I'll skip over to the board. Um, this is by team member and I added the label in so we could talk about 12.7. And I think, was this what you were talking about, Matthias? The documentation uh, that's under No, Camille's? there was actually the one, uh, and the uh, second from the top under open. It says at GitLab CTL reload will restart. Um, I had looked at that earlier today. But then I, yeah, then I switched to something else because I thought, well, there's more import stuff that should take precedence. Okay, yeah, this one's not actively being worked on. I'm gonna move it out. We still may have a week left. And there was this follow-up refactor. I mean, I parked this for now. It's not a functional change. Um, it's just a refactor that we kind of moved out. Um, it was it, it came out of the Puma um, epic. So. Okay. Uh, Camille, you want to run through yours real quick? Yes, I, I merged another small change to the atomic processing. And I hope that I tomorrow pass it to the maintainer review. I, I didn't yet start working on these documentation changes. Okay. So uh, as soon as I get this, I get these documentation changes also done. I'm I'm being very pumped and optimistic that I finish off to that this milestone to finally not not move that away to the next milestone. Okay. Does that cover the rest of them as well? Okay, there is also like park inserts alternative POC. I actually, uh, I kind of finished my POC, so I guess we could maybe as close this issue. Which one is that? The last one on the list. Uh, okay, I, I'm not seeing that. Maybe yes, it did moved somehow. Can you Can you refresh? 
musical. I still don't see it. Whatever. I don't know. Ah, it's got moved to 12.8. Okay, I I don't have filtering for the mice. So. I, I think I had them all initially created under 12.8 because I, I broke them out because we said we're not creating new issues and that they're really small. And it didn't sound so, so, so small, so I didn't create it under 12.7. I remove the milestone. So, what, sorry, what did you say about this one, Camille? Um, I actually finished my POC. So, we should Matthias discuss that further, but... Yeah, um, I, I, I left some comments already. You can have a look at them. Okay. Put the milestone back on. All right, well, Alexi, you know you're just getting yeah. back and getting caught up again, but could I please remove a milestone? <laughs> because I only need one more issue that is also in twelve point eight, but kind of raising. Yeah, so I have three merge requests. The all of them are in review state, so I'm waiting for some comments, and we'll try to merge it as soon as possible. So first one is just a bunch of unit specs to make our JSON fixture as close to real situation as possible. And it naturally leads to the last one, the third one. It's some kind of meta test, which we discussed that uh, tries to force all new relations being tested. So if developer adds some relation, he will receive, they will receive a warning uh, on our spec that the relation should be either tested or muted. And uh, unique relation, the middle one, it's also in review. I think I received some comments from Camille already and applied suggestions, so I would also like to merge it soon. So that's, that's it. Okay. And I forgot to ask Chinyu to update on Friday. So Chinyu, if you're watching this, can you update your issues today? I guess Tuesday. Um, all right, Matthias. Yeah, uh, so the first one is the one I just mentioned earlier that came out of the Puma Epic. It's just a refactor. Um, unfortunately, the, uh, the reviewer, uh, he's out sick and he hadn't responded in a couple of days, so maybe it's a longer thing. So I just reassigned it to a maintainer for now. Uh, mm -hmm. Look as well. Uh, then the next one, that's the one we part. Um, sh should I unassign myself, actually? Because I, I put it back into ready for development because Sidekick took less priority than import for yeah. now. But I'm, I was kind of, it, it's still in development in the sense that it's not fully done. Um, yeah. yeah and the next, yourself. yeah, okay. Sh 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 yeah, okay, all right, I'm just gonna like unassign myself. Then uh, the next one, uh, that is the parent story for all the batch insert stuff. So that's connected to the POC that I had open that we discussed. Um, mm -hmm. I think at this point that neither of the POCs that we currently have are like super viable. I think we're still too far away from making this production ready because they all rely on like similar private APIs and active record and it looks really mm -hmm. brittle to me. So my, my feeling is, I don't know, like Camille probably has an opinion on this as well, but I, I'm wondering like when we call this done because I don't think either of the POCs are really a solution to this. Um, but yeah, we can discuss that in, in the ticket. Um, but the, last, yeah. I, I would propose like let's have another sync meeting Okay. About this bulk insert, because I, I think that I have some idea how we could move forward. Oh, but, okay. Uh, do but, do definitely, but, but definitely not with the POCs. Uh, okay, yeah, that, that sounds interesting. Sh sh should I set it up or? Yes, please. If, if, could we do it like, I don't know, Monday next week? Monday next week, sure. Yeah. Cool, I'll do that. Thank you. Because, like, I, I'm, I, I spent some time also like on this bulk insert. Like, it's quite challenging to get it right, like across the globe, like across the board. But maybe we could do something smaller. Yes, that, uh -huh. I think that that is my gut feel as well. I would I would love to hear any ideas. Yeah. Because like I, I mean definitely we should move something there. It's just like mm -hmm. trying to to like globally. It's just super complex to do it, yeah. and it's just super hard. I agree. Okay. Cool. So Matthias, you'll schedule that one. Uh, yeah, yeah. Sounds good. 
Uh, and then the DB uh, we talked about. Yes, that's that's the one. Yeah, we talked about this already. That was the MR. We looked at it earlier. Okay. Uh, Nick was out. Anything else we need to cover? No release post items yet, unless we, well, if we get the testing out before the release, then that will be included. Um, if we have some good, if we have some good import results, then we'll include that in the release post, but uh, I can't really think of anything else at the moment. But if you do, if anybody thinks of anything, just add that label to their issues that they're working on. Camille was going to start typing something. All right. Uh, anything else anybody wants to cover? Sorry, just a super quick question. Uh, this delivery, uh, sorry, deliverable label. I I never edited this before. Um. So mm -hmm. sorry. Can you can you quickly explain again when exactly should we add this? Only if something, uh, we is sure to go out for the light milestone it's labeled with. Yeah. In in Scrum parlance, it would be something we're committing to, right? Um, mm -hmm. So typically you do this at the beginning of a mi uh, milestone kickoff. Like here's all okay. the things that we believe we are going to deliver for the milestone. And then especially for us, if there's things that we bring in that we think we're gonna deliver in the milestone, then you add that deliverable. Um, and other teams are using this more rigorously than we are, and they're using it as like a retro topic at the end. And again, memory team, we're slightly different. We don't have as much planned work as feature teams do. So I'm dubious on the value of it, but it's something we should continue to, as our roadmap stabilizes, it's something we can use going forward as a retro topic as well. So. Okay. Right. And then Camille, section performance improvement build. Um, yeah, it's just the discussion that we have with Joshua on what he wants to add in there um, and how we, if we have any measurements on performance improvements, we should certainly include those. Um, so, uh, I, I mean, like, my comment is really about, like, um, a lot of stuff about the import is basically some generic performance improvement and we have section for the generic performance improvement. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I wonder like how this section is like gathered um, and whether we should actively uh, posting our merge request into the section. And then like the, the description of the issue and the merge request could uh, document exactly how much gain it it brings without going into a lot of details as part of the blog post because like i i'm now thinking like we shipped like the last month or is or was it this month like graceful failures for the import uh, but like we didn't announce that really and i believe that some people would be quite interested and it's kind of like future improvement, performance improvement as well. And we yeah. do a lot of these changes and I think that we think that they are not such relevant as the features uh, like proposed, but I think we still have a plenty of things that we can be proud of and we should kind of announce on the release post. Even yeah. as even even as a like single line mention of the of the item, work item that we did. Agreed. I think the graceful failures came out this month, so it would be something we would consider for the performance improvements on the release post. But also, the way I understand these release posts is user facing, and I'm not sure how much. Well, I guess for the self managed users, they're going to do a lot of import, or they could potentially do imports. But um, so I, I can follow up with Joshua on this one to see if it makes sense to add into the release post. Uh, okay, so so to give you like some some perspective, like I'm looking at the blog post from the last month, and they are rather like not user facing, uh, like user friendly information in the performance improvements. It's just a list of the general performance improvements, and I think that some of our users may be interested in the keyword 
oh, they did something in the import in the latest release. And this is something, whether it's working or not working. Uh, so um, I, I think that like, uh, if we have these small improvements, we should basically add them to the performance improvement section. I'm just one now wondering like how this section is constructed. Do we have to label that somehow or is it taken somehow different? That's, that's uh, ultimately I'm responsible. The manager of the team is responsible for making sure that information gets in there. Um, but anybody can add that information in and um, but yeah it, it's something we can add to our meeting to make sure that we get the right information in there so but to answer your question i'm responsible and i will follow up with josh on it and make sure that uh, we include that and i will ping everybody when we start adding information from our team on performance improvement okay so actually i wrote a proposal uh, if not maybe we should just have the label performance improvement release item that would be basically taken automatically every release item i mean every every uh, every every release and then i kind of put into blog post automatically you mean from the change log anything with a performance uh, tag or uh, like like um, Today we mark release item for the issues that should end up in the release section or something like that. So maybe we could just gather that automatically using the label and using the API. It's 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 so like kind of automate the work of the PM. Just if we I, I don't know how is the process now. I'm assuming that it's maybe it may manual, but if it's if it's manual, maybe the better would be automated process, which is like just add a label, um, the, and the PM responsible for the release post, we just run the script to gather a, a, like a, a list of the items to show in the performance improvements section from the list of the issues, and that's it. There is, there is no uh, like owner in that process. It's just, you just add a label and it just automatically happens. It could be later be maybe marked with the group responsible for making the change or something like that, if it's relevant or not. So it means that change log, either change log or merge request uh, name should include the actual performance gain, right? Some numbers, some, something that is. Probably the merge request would make the most sense. Um, I, I would say that like, uh, ideally, you would like to put that in the merge request, uh, but but like you should put that anyway, regardless of putting in the release post, uh, as as a help for the reviewer and maintainer to understand why they should merge these changes. So it's kind of like completely orthogonal to problem of gathering these uh, performance improvements, because I'm I'm commenting about some way automated way to gather. Uh, performance improvements for each release blog post automatically, not manually, by his person mm -hmm. responsible for doing that. I see. On um, a different note, um, first one we missed there. If somebody, if this is not done, can somebody follow up on this issue here since Nicola is out of town? All right. Um, any other topics? We are a few minutes over. Apologies for anybody that had to run. Anything else we need to cover today? Nope. All right. Thanks, everybody. Happy Monday. Thank you. Thanks. See ya. Bye, everyone.